Okay, hello everybody. Uh, today I'm just going to share a couple of slides uh, and some of uh, I, my ideas on how to refine and improve uh, dividends uh, investing strategy. Okay, and, and for a start, right, uh, when you are a dividends investor, uh, investors are normally very happy when they see a particular uh, symbol that looks like a dialogue, uh, some kind of a speech bubble next to the stock on the SGX website. And if you hover your, mic, uh, your, your mouse cursor onto that bubble, you will find the words come dividend, which means that uh, your stock is going to release some dividends very soon. And then if you were to focus on the stock under dividends, you'll be able to see a series of important dates. Uh, first X date would be the day where if you were to buy the stock on that day, or later you will not be entitled to the dividend. That means uh, in this example that I have here, you need to buy before the 29th of August 2019 to be entitled to the dividend of the stock. All right. The actual dividends would actually be paid and will appear in your bank account at approximately 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on the payment date itself. Okay, And this is the particulars would actually show you how much dividends you'll be entitled to per share that you own. All right, So this is basically what retail investors need to know uh, about dividends investing. And why, why do we invest in dividends? We, we invest because dividends tend to be given out tax-free. Right? So after one single tier of corporate taxation, which is around 17%, the dividend then arrives in your bank account and uh, they are not taxed at a personal level. So this makes Singapore some kind of a dividends kind of haven. And uh, as much negativity as it is about uh, the local stock market, uh, dividends investors uh, still pretty much enjoy it here. All right? But I think one very important feature of dividends investing is that if you were to focus on a very high yield kind of portfolio, they tend to preserve their value slightly better uh, in an economic downturn. So they tend to be uh, more value preserving during a secular bear. However, one of the things that we are concerned about as a dividends investor is that occasionally dividends get slashed. So in the fourth quarter of 2018, Asia Pay Television Trust, which used to have yields exceeding 13%, suddenly slashed their, their dividends by more than 80%, and it created an investor panic, right? which uh, a lot of my friends who are invested in the, uh, with a dividend portfolio suddenly had to rejiggle uh, their portfolio as Asia Pay Television Trust uh, stopped being a consistent uh, dividend-yielding instrument at that time. All right, so the question is, how do we avoid a situation uh, like that happening? So the thing that we need to understand is that stock dividends can come from three possible sources on the cash flow statement. So one of the sources is cash flow from operations. And this is where your dividend should ideally come from. All right? And this is where you are getting your money from buying and selling products and services. So this is where dividends ideally come from. All right? Now, however, some uh, managers might try to financially engineer your dividends by selling away plant and equipment, right? Uh, so that's not good because it means that you are killing off your golden goose, right? Uh, rather than uh, collecting eggs from your golden goose. So uh, we don't want our money to come from cash flow from investments. And finally, uh, more enterprising managers might even borrow money from a bank to pay investors in the form of a dividend. And, and you don't want your dividends to come from this source as well, right? So how do you actually distinguish between a good dividend or a bad dividend? A good dividend therefore comes from cash flow from operations. So one idea about coming up with a system uh, that is sustainable is to consider three different ways of building dividend portfolios. All right, so, so the first way, which is fairly trite, is that obviously we want to hunt for stocks that provide higher current yields. So we look for stocks that gave a higher dividend, right? Okay, but that's already a given, right? And then after that, we want to qualify these dividends by selecting companies where the payout ratio is lower. 
So if your dividend is a smaller payout compared to the earnings for a particular quarter, these dividends generally tend to have a slightly higher quality, right? And finally is the method of free cash flow. We, we want to ensure that the dividend comes from sustainable dividend sources. In other words, they should come primarily from cash flow from operations, all right? And uh, I've got the evidence right here uh, using a tool called piinvesting.com. Uh, I was able to pick the 50 largest stocks in Singapore. And had you been investing in this for the past 10 years, you would have gotten a fairly decent annualized return of actually 15%, right? So that actually, uh, that actually is a very different kind of result compared to what critics of uh, Singapore uh, investing would say. But actually, the results have been not too bad, right, for the past 10 years. But had we been invested in 25 of these 50 largest stocks that had the highest dividend yield, the highest free cash flow, and the lowest payout ratios, our performance actually improves from 15% to 25.4%. All right, so, so therein lies the evidence that this particular way of investing is a significantly superior method to just investing like in a portfolio of large Singapore blue chip counters. All right, and uh, here is the resulting screen. Okay, you will find that these counters uh, are very large and they are very uncontroversial, right? Which is uh, what dividends investors and conservative investors really like, okay? Okay, so how do we actually do our final test to make sure that the stocks that we buy, the high dividend stocks that we buy, uh, would be able to sustain these dividends going forward. And we perform a very simple test known as the test of free cash flow. So free cash flow is a number derived from the cash flow statement where you take the operating cash flow of a particular stock and you minus off the capital expenditure for a particular quarter or for a particular year. All right, And you accept the stock if the free cash flow exceeds the dividends that's been given out for that financial year. All right. So where do you find your company cash flow? Uh, on the SGX website, click onto securities, followed by prices, and then find your stock, and then scroll down until you see financial statements, and then you expand the cash flow statement. It should look a little bit like this on this particular slide. All right. So here's an example of how we calculate the free cash flow for Oxley uh, in the year 2017. All right, we can see here that cash flow from operating activities is 109.9 million. All right, and then what we do is that we net it against capital expenditure, so we minus off 43.1 million. All right, and the resulting free cash flow is 66.8 million. All right, and then for that year we compare it against the dividends that's gone out, so that's 49.8 million. Uh, we say that, well, it passes the test. So at least for that particular year, I think it is in 2018, Oxley has sustainable dividends. All right? So you could actually perform this test for every equity counter uh, that you have been examining. Okay. Uh, here's an example of what uh, some of uh, my students have been taught uh, using 2017 data when Singapore still had three telcos in the stock market. So if you were to take the operating cash flow of Starhub, Singtel, and M1, and you net it against the capital expenditure, you will find the following, right? You will find that for Starhub in 2017, right, you find that the, the cash flow from operations is actually below the dividends being paid out. So Starhub isn't particularly sustainable. And uh, from that point onwards, Starhub stocks have not been doing all that well. In the second example for Singtel, uh, dividends are also not sustainable because you have a, a free cash flow of uh, 2,481, but it gave out 3,346 worth of dividends. But in that particular year, you can forgive Singtel because uh, Singtel basically hived off uh, their fiber assets in a form of net link trust all right so for that particular year if you understand the reason why uh, it's not sustainable uh, then maybe you can forgive a company for that right so so that's why fundamental analysis is still important the third example m1 uh, actually had sustainable dividends the free cash flow exceeded the dividends uh, but subsequently m1 was actually taken private and is now part of the capital group 
All right, so uh, here's my conclusion on refining a dividend strategy. So uh, having a dividend strategy is often not enough. It can even result in poorer performance. So there are several modifications you can make to your strategy to improve it even better. One is to find a way to uh, put into your model uh, an idea that if the same amount of dividends come from a lower payout ratio, then these dividends have a slightly higher quality. All right, And if the dividends are clearly within the parameters of the free cash flow, uh, it should come directly from business operations. So that is also another good sign. All right. And so this basically uh, summarizes uh, my presentation on refining a dividend strategy. Now, if you like uh, what I've been uh, talking about for investing in a dividend strategy, uh, smash that like button, uh, comment on this particular video. All right. Uh, and that's it for me. Thank you very much.